From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's like us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. We teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Louie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Finally. Yes. How you doing? Good. Good, man. Well, here's the situation. Um, I've been dating this girl for about three months, and um, I've taken her to a couple concerts and, you know, stuff like that, thinking I was going to get some action. Because, you know, you say you spend no more than $40, so I spend less. Well, the situation is now, man, I'm not getting any action. I'm still trying to find out why. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you spending? Um, well, recently I took her to a, a Manu Chao concert. It was about uh, 30 bucks, 10 bucks less than what you said. And yeah, yeah, but, but, was, but did, you have a, did she have a drink? Did she have any food? No, well, yeah, I bought her some water, like 35 bucks, you know? And then you, uh, did, did you take her anywhere before or after the concert? Yeah, man, after the concert, I took her up to this, uh, this spot that I've gotten busy with some chick before. But not someplace you had to spend any money? No, yeah, All pretty right. much. <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah, man, nothing happened. I didn't even get a, a freaking hug, man. By the way, taking her to a concert, uh, you had to buy a ticket for yourself, too. Yeah, so the so cost of that reality, evening was way yeah. more than 40 bucks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I tell you, by the way, I tell you regularly, don't take them to concerts. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I've, I've been listening to you, but, you know, I've never taken it into consideration. Well, now you see that doing it your way isn't working, is it? Yeah, pretty much, man. Pretty well, much. <laughs> you have to follow the instructions. Yeah, that's that's what I got. No do. concerts, that, no I, gifts. I made sure she ain't got a MySpace, nothing like that. No, man. we don't. What do we care about that at this point? You just care about getting laid right now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What, you look, are you looking for a girlfriend? Who cares if she has MySpace? No. Heck no. If she has MySpace, she's probably a slut like so many of the women on MySpace. Exactly. I can agree with you more. Right. Yeah. So that was, who cares if she has MySpace? That's probably a good thing for you. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm just trying to figure out now where do I go from here, man? Because honestly, I'm not. I can't deal with it no more, man. I, I need. Then I move need on. To get laid. Then move <laughs> on. Guess what? You're wasting your time. Pretty much, right? That's yes, but next time, do it the right way. No concerts. No sporting events. No tickets. No nothing. No I'm flowers. Not. No compliments. Yeah, it's the chicken head. Yeah, all right, man. Well, thank you. Thank you for the advice. And before I go, man, I just want to say thank you for your services. You, uh, your wisdom is very much appreciated. Louis, take I am. Kobe style. I'll take you out Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's like it's one oh one with your professor Ariel. Hello. Hi Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just had a question before I got started. You really think that we are not worth spending a single dime on? Well, as little as possible. I, I, I certainly, uh, obviously, you might want to buy a drink or something because it greases the skids. Uh, but other than that, no. Okay, well, um, you're looking for a free lay. There is something called your hand. Uh, darling, guess what? There's a lot of women who will give a free lay. You don't need to use your hand. There are women who are giving it away for free. Okay, here's my issue. Yes, there are women giving it away for free. But what I have the issue with is that you are purposely targeting people with low self-esteem, people who are good people. They have not done anything to anyone else. They've obviously been hurt in their life, which is why they're so cautious and afraid of you men, 
afraid to get close, afraid to trust. And I know because I had been betrayed by men that I have known for 10 years. It's unbelievable what you people can do. Thank you. So I don't understand why you guys are so afraid to just wait and see what the person is like. Let them check you because out. We, because we don't care what you're like. You don't care what we're like? No. Okay, then go buy a hooker. Why do you have because to Because there are women, women giving it away for free. The ones with low self-esteem give it right up. Okay, well, we don't need a hooker that want to just have sex just like you. There are plenty of women out there that are skanks that just like sex for sex. So just go find them. But dear, the women, the fun. women who are most likely to give it up are women with the lowest self-esteem. And the women with the lowest self-esteem are usually the most attractive women among us. That's not true. Actually. Oh, yeah, it is true. The women with the highest self-esteem. And if you ever want proof of this, just watch Maury Povich or uh, Montel Williams, any of those daytime talk shows. The women with the highest self-esteem are the large and in charge types with the six-inch acrylic nails who stand there. Oh, no, you didn't. Those are the women with the highest self-esteem. Okay. The women with the lowest self-esteem are the women who weigh 105 pounds but wish they weighed 104 pounds. They, they are very tough on themselves. Okay. Women who are very good looking are perfectionists and start panicking if everything doesn't look perfect. They are constantly looking in the mirror, constantly adjusting their makeup. These are the women who can be had. Okay, well, I am one of those low self-esteem people, but I do not give it up just to anyone because I do not trust you people. Well, that's fine, dear. For every one of you who doesn't give it up, there's three more who do. And what about those men out there that you're giving advice to that yeah. you're just trying to give them the easy way out? Right, the easy layout is what I'm giving them. What are you guys, six years old, that everything has to be easy? Why should it be hard? Not there to make it why, should we make it, why should we make it any harder on ourselves than we have to? It's not hard. What's wrong with spending a few bucks on a date? What's, What's the point? With- when you don't, why spend money if you don't have to? It's like if they're selling Crest toothpaste for three dollars at one store and they're selling it for two ninety nine at another store. Why pay extra? Okay, you obviously are extremely shallow. And if I go to ra- oh, that, that, that makes me that. shallow. It makes me shallow that I don't want to spend more for something than I have to. Do you go to Costco? Yes. Why do you go to Costco? Why don't you just go to Nordstrom or the most expensive stores there are? What, are you shallow? It's what you can afford. Well, dear, why be shallow? Why don't you go to the most expensive stores there are? Stores, retail is different than women. What? Women are living human beings. Doesn't matter. You still have merchandise that you're selling to us, and we want to get it for the lowest possible price. How much do you value your friends? If I could go to Costco and get a pallet full of women and use my Costco card, I would. Again, how much do you value your closest friend? Well, my closest friend I value a lot, but I don't consider women to be my closest friends. Women are sperm depositories. Hold it. Hold it. Your closest friend, would you spend money on him? Would you? Absolutely. Okay. You people don't seem to understand that marriage is nothing but a very close friendship with sex. It's it's not even that. Oh, yes, it is. But there are women out there, I give you that, there are women out there who don't realize what a relationship is about. And you guys are just unbelievably messed up because that's all you've ever seen. You have not stopped to talk with the person. Who wants to hear it? Who wants to hear it? Who wants to hear it? Most women, what do they want to talk about? Paris Hilton? I want to talk about uh, what uh, entertainment tonight. I want to talk about Lindsay Lohan. I want to talk How about many reality women shows. That have the same IQ as you. Oh, stop it, dear! Uh, the fact is, we don't want to have a conversation with you. We just want to get lucky. Well, then go find the people that aren't with intelligence. Don't They're worry, dear. That's our preference. Okay, then why are you telling? As I always guys? say, if Forrest Gump had a daughter who was a nine or a ten, I'm in. Why are you not letting the men know the difference between a skank and a real woman? Because, the, well, first of all, what you call, usually when women use the phrase real woman, they're referring to fat women or fugly women, women who are fours and fives. That, you can't handle a real woman. That, that's usually who we're talking about here. We're looking for hot chicks who keep their trap shut. Okay, that's because you can't handle what they're saying. You don't, just don't well, I just don't want life to be any more difficult than it has to be. For example, where I grew up, you had to shovel snow off the driveway. You know what I did? I moved. I'm tired of shoveling snow. 
Now, all the people where I come from go, hey, you had to have life easy. You had to move to California. Well, guess what? Why should life be any harder than it has to be? Because people are different than snow. How would you like it if you were a woman and some guy used you like that? Would you like it? Well, you have it's a free country. You have an option to say no, but guess what? Would Many women like don't. It? it doesn't matter. Answer I couldn't question. care less. I, I, I'm not a woman. I'll never be a woman. And I couldn't care less what women think. I couldn't care less. You couldn't care less because you don't give a damn about anyone but yourself. Well, by the way, I tell guys they should be looking out for number one. Is that because you guys rejected when you were little? You guys doesn't matter, you dear. You're not, not now unless you've got psychiatry uh, credentials that you're prepared to show to us here. Don't start uh, being an armchair psychologist or psychiatrist. I don't need to be an armchair psychologist. Uh, you know, well, you, you are you're in no you are not capable. You are not capable of analyzing any of this, and it doesn't really it's matter not why. I think it's common sense. It doesn't even matter why we are the way we are. We want things as cheap and easy as we can get them, and that's it. Those women out That's there why you go to Costco. Be protected from people like you well, and the men out there that you are. Who's going to protect them? Who us? is going to protect them? All you have to do is use a few backhanded compliments, play on a woman's low self-esteem, her insecurities, tell her that you like the fact that she's only about 10 or 15 pounds overweight, tell her don't pay attention to what other people say, you think they're hot. That's all you have to do. And women suddenly become insecure and they start to fold up and then you just go in for the kill. It's that simple. How is lying any more work than telling the truth? Who's lying? You are. You told that guy to go up and find a construction site and tell him that it was his house. He asked me how to get, how to have game, and that's how you have game. You, if you don't have money and you don't have a career and you don't have potential... Then go get one. No, the easy way to do it is just to say you're the owner of the trucking company. You say that they're not real men unless they lie to women. You no, that's not what I, that is actually not what I said. Honor. I never said that. Uh, now you're making things up. I never said that. But the guy asked me how to have game. He's a truck driver, and he wanted to know what to do. And I told him, tell him you own the trucking company. You didn't say it. It's implied in everything you say. And no, do. no, dear. That's your interpretation of what I'm saying, and I'm telling you that's not what I'm saying. Find a woman who disagrees with me. It doesn't matter. I'm, uh, by the way, you're not the host of the show, and I'm not going to do anything that you tell me to do here. But the bottom line here is that uh, that, that guy needs to have a way to a appear to have potential. And by the way, any woman who sleeps with a guy because he owns a company or sleeps with a guy because he's a doctor or an attorney, she's getting exactly what she asked for. There she's are women getting like exactly that, what yes, she deserves. don't really care about There them. you go. Well, she's got to say, what are you worried about? Tell the guy to go take a woman up to a construction site and say, this is where my mansion's being built. Why are you worried about it? It'll never be you. So what do you care? Because there are a lot of women out there that don't deserve that, and the men out there are... Well, but they won't they fall for it. The, the ones who don't deserve it won't fall for it. Yes, they will. Oh, they will? Well, because but, they are being lied to. But, but they the, think the, they're finding something completely wonderful because oh, they are well, being well, lied why, to. Then why should it matter if the guy owns the company or not? The kind of women that you guys should be sleeping with are... Why should it matter if a man owns a company about. or not? The women you're talking about who are so wholesome and wonderful and nice, why would they care whether a man owns a company? He could just be a poor, homeless poet living on a street corner, and it's all about love, right, dear? The kind of women you want, like I said, won't care, even if you do tell them the truth. So tell them the truth, and that way you skip can it. discriminate between... Just skip the it. You go to a club, you find these chicks who are out there, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're the coyotes, the pumas, you go to the chicks who are out there looking for a good time, and you tell them whatever you have to tell them, get what you want, and then get the hell out of there. That's what I tell the guys to do. All I'm saying is you should not be so cruel to women. We're not that being cruel. We're getting what we need. If you if you don't want to give us what we need, don't give it to us. There's women out there who don't know the difference. and Well, that's their us, problem. Let the buyer beware. That's uh, caveat emptor, as they say in Latin. With predators out there like you, it's no wonder that this world... Dear, you can't use words like that on the air. Forgive me. No, I'm not, it's not a matter of me forgiving you. It's the federal government that won't forgive you. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll deal with them then. Oh, well, that's fine. That's a $325,000 fine every time you do that. Okay, well, I didn't know that. You didn't know you can't say the F word on the radio? No, I didn't. Really? So you've been hearing people using the F word on the radio? Yeah, there's this one what station. St I don't even what know station it is. is using the F word? I'd like to get it, get the uh, name of that station. It's one of the rock stations. I don't They're know using the F word on the air? Really? Mm hmm That's very interesting. Well, once we find out who that is, maybe we turn them into the federal government. Yeah, it's another um, annoying talk show like yours. Ah, another annoying talk show like mine. Amazing how these annoying talk shows get you to tune in, listen, call in. It's amazing. 
people that are obnoxious always catch my attention. Oh, there you go. And see, you're in a way you're proving my point, darling. Um, no, you know, the more obnoxious really. I, I am, you know, the you. more obnoxious I am, the more tail I get. That's because you are just a loser who's praying. No matter, on I'm a loser who gets are. laid by one woman after another. It never stops. Why do you have to keep finding different women? Why can't you stay with the same one? Because it, it, I like a little fresh meat every now and then. I like some fresh meat. Fresh meat. Yes. So what? You never enjoyed it with one person. And you wanted to stay with them. I got. I've been married before, dear, but uh, it's a lot more fun just getting some new meat all the time. Okay, then find someone who likes to sleep around with other people while you're in a relationship. I don't need that. Why be in a relationship? Because you care about them like you. What do I need a relationship for? A relationship, like I said, is just being very close friends. It's nothing more. I don't no, dear. It's not even that. Your close friends are same gender people. No. Those are your close friends. Oh yeah, they are. I yeah, they are. Male close friends. Well, they all want to have sex with you. <sighs> doesn't mean I'm going to give it to them, and doesn't mean I would say care. so. It's all based on a false premise to begin with. And that means they're not really friends. If you won the lottery and it was a hundred million dollar jackpot. And people you never spoke to before started saying, Hey, Ariel, oh, I, I want to get to know you better. hundred million, oh, that's great. Would you think they were really your friends? Um, no. And they're never going to get a piece of your hundred million, but they keep trying to be your friend, but they're not really your friend, right? Neither are your guy friends, except instead of a hundred million dollars, they want your vagina. Okay, you say that women So are they're not your women? friends, are they? Nope. But why do you talk to these guys? Why do you say guy friends? I got these guy friends. Why? Because we have a lot in common as far as talking goes, and they actually stick and talk to me. Yeah, they stick and talk to you because they want to see you naked, dear. Okay, well, then they can just play the game all they want. So you have a friendship naked. based on a false premise. Okay, whatever. Right? Whatever. Hang on a second here. Oscar, what did you want to say to Ariel? Ariel, I don't know what plan are you from, but seriously, women, all they want is one day I'm a pre-med student, next night I'm a law student, then I'm a writer. Their eyes light up. Like, if I tell them a poor college student is starving, this girl is closed up like a locked gate. We like men with intelligence. That's the simple fact. No, they want money. No, not all of us do. I have more money than my fiancé. Way more. <laughs> oh, now we find out she's got a fiancé at 18. Now we see why she's so offended. Yeah, really. Come on. She's fat or desperate, one or the other. Um, no, neither. Yeah, I highly doubt that. Look, Tom, what you're teaching these guys is great. Everybody live by it. I'm 22. Got out of college in four years. Why? Because I put my head down. I studied. I got late when I wanted to. And I didn't have a girlfriend. That's the way you do it. And by the way, what do you tell these women you do for a living? What, do you tell them a good lie once in a while? Oh, yeah. Uh, see, I was a translator for the FBI. That was great. It worked out real nice. I was a pre-med student and a law student. I mean, just throw out a couple of big words to these dumb girls and they eat it up. There you go. And that's not all they eat up, is it? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Oscar. See that, uh, Ariel? It, uh, it works. He's, he's following the program, and it works. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I'm saying that it's wrong. Oh, well, dear, uh, really, uh, how can you decide that that's wrong? If it works, it's right. Because it is a living human being with feelings. So are we. Works. What? So are we. No, you guys don't have feelings. If you had feelings... Oh, yes, we've got feelings. We've got feelings that we want to get laid, feelings that we need sex feelings that were horny we got a lot of feelings that guy that called you earlier because he was afraid to break up with his girlfriend who he could not hurt her because he still felt compassion for her and you called him he was a, a pussy person. he's a complete pussy no he was not he oh, was yeah. being a real man he was saying that complete she had pussy feelings. Complete, but yeah, yeah, a complete pussy who's demanding money from him all the time. Yes, Just the kind we talk right. about. What he should have done is sit down, talk to her, and if she refused to uh, acknowledge the fact that she was using him, then he should have left her. But oh, when you stop do it, it. You talk to the yeah, person. yeah, no, 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 no. You don't talk to a person who's a user like that. You kick her to the goddamn curb. Mike, what did you want to say to Ariel? Hey, Tom. Hey, I, I think everyone's kind of well, not everyone, because we've only had one caller on this broad, but I think she's missing the point completely. She is the girl that you describe to everybody, all of us, every day. I don't care what which one of your listeners, if she's in a club, I'm a decent-looking guy. I make good money. I'm single. I guarantee I meet this girl in a club. Oh, oh she wants to talk so tough. I pull her out of there so fast that night and we'll be frigging legs up, banging it up, either in her place or mine, guaranteed, just by what she said. It, it's unreal. Her insecurities that she has herself 
and she wants to talk a big game, but then why is she listening to your program? <laughs> because be I'm obnoxious. Can count the 20. Guaranteed. And I don't even have that good of a game, but I guarantee you I'd have this broad in my bed. I've had worse and better than you, sweetheart, and you'd be right there with them. And that's because you're finding women that are shallow. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you're right there with them. You'd be in my bed tonight if I met you in a club tonight. No, Guaranteed. I wouldn't because I don't go to those skanky places. She can't because she's Wherever under. She's you, underage. I'd have you in my bed. Wherever it was, Starbucks, library, club. I I'm have enough sorry, game. love, but I, I like have people with a two-digit IQ at least. Then why are you listening to Tom like this right now? Like I said, it was obnoxious, and I happened to cross it when I was sitting in the car. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of funny. That's funny how all the women who call on the show said the same thing. But they're well, calling in wondering what we're doing, and they're trying to figure out how. And, I, again, I guarantee it, me or any other guy listening to the show with even a half an ounce of game would have you in their bed if they knew what they were doing. Mike, Ariel, thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I was single again, I would live my life listening to you. But I'm married. See that? You're tied down, and you want to go out and bang around again. Oh, man, do I ever. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5800 Tom, it's Likas 101. I am your professor, Olga. Hello. Hello? You busy over there? Um, actually, yeah, I'm having a good time. I'm at the beach, and it's fun. We're drinking beers, and it's really, we're having a great time. So why are you, why are you uh-huh. call why are you calling a radio show? Oh, I'm calling because I heard you. I, I we just tuned in and you were saying something about like why being in a relationship. Yeah. And I kind of figured, you know, you've been married about three to four times. I'm Seventeen, sure. eighteen times, yes. How many times? Seventeen times. Oh, seventeen times. Yes, yeah, seventeen times I've been married. Mm-hmm. Oh, so then obviously you were kind of desperate to be in a relationship. Oh, I was, but not anymore. Oh, okay. Now I realize little sluts like you are easily gettable. Oh, okay. I get it. So I'm just wondering. I mean, you know, you're just saying that, and it's just like it's it's kind of sad. Nothing sad about it, dear. I get all the poon I want. Anytime I want a new piece of ass, I just reach out and touch someone. Oh, okay, but then you were just, it just I mean, I'm just kind of curious because it just seemed like you were so desperate. And Again, Terry, is, is this the only material you have? Because if you're going to keep repeating the same material over and over, no, I'm, I'm going to move on. Saying, I need to hear you, know, you say something new other than what you've already said. Right, okay, well, it's just, I'm just saying that because it's just, you know, like I said. Because you're just going to repeat it again, like I said. That, and when I hear the phrase, like I said, uh, you're pretty much on the way out. Like I said means you're going to repeat everything you just said. Literally, it means that. Like I said, don't repeat yourself. Like I said, don't repeat yourself. Because like I said, you find yourself in a conundrum. And when you find yourself in a conundrum, like I said... You start repeating yourself and you find yourself in a conundrum. Like I said, 1-800-5800-TOM. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Hello, Tom. Hello, Jeff. You know, first of all, let me tell you that uh, I've been a listener of yours for a real long time, up until about a year and a half ago when I got serious and I just kind of phased out of listening to you just because it was in my car. You didn't need it anymore because you found love. And, uh, oh, no, boy, did I find it. Um, right, let me tell you. Bruce, how much is it, How much is love costing you, Jeff? Say again, I'm sorry? How much is true love costing you? Uh, well, actually, that, that's my last question for you, because uh, everything is over now. I mean, I've gotten to the point where, I mean, it's the same old story. I'm an older guy, younger girl, met her, we hit it off. She was younger. She's a stripper, uh, part-time, but wanted to get out of it. 
Long story short, we end up we end up living together. We're having a great time. We're in love. She got you know she had an old psycho ex boyfriend that she was getting away from, and I helped her out with that situation. She had some court problems and this and that. I helped her out with money for it. Long story short, and a year later or so, I get fed up with everything. I do the right thing and I kick her out. But I'm still, you know, the puss, and I still want her back and oh, all this stuff. And now I'm pissed off about the fact that I lent her money, all these other things. However, when I did lend her the money, I made her sign a promissory note, and I made her put up her car for it. Right. And, and just recently, I, said, I, I called it in, and I said, I want my money, and if you don't give me money, I'm going to take the car. And now she's freaking out. Right, so take it. I should, right? Of course. I should have no remorse. You have to ask. You have to ask. Do you understand? There is no lending money to a to a stripper or a hooker. You don't lend them money because because they they will never pay you back. Yeah, she was good. She paid me back for. I set up payments with her. She paid like the first couple of months. I got money, and then it tapered off you know, because I was a sucker and I was in love. You know, you let those things go. And you Why do you go, fall in love go. with a stripper? A, because I'm an idiot, Tom, and I wasn't listening. A to you. stripper is. A, you want to talk about women being sperm depositories? A stripper is no more than that. Do you understand? Yeah, I totally understand, and I, t- I totally know you're right. And and before you stop listening, I used to tell you that on the air all the time. And for years, I've been. I was. I would never do that. I would never date. I would never even talk to anyone if they were under 25 years old. I wouldn't have anything to do with them. I was, you know, always on top of my game. I'm a successful person. What did I, I tell you about here. strippers? What did I tell you? I, I don't remember your exact words. Forgive me. Uh, there's no dating a stripper. There's strippers no are stripper. strippers are hookers who don't put out. Strippers are human ATMs. <laughs> I've said this for years. I know you have, and I and and, and you pay. You I, thought, and, and you thought you knew more than I did, didn't oh, you? Of course. At that, at that time, and, and once we started having sex, and the sex was great and everything, yeah, sure, as we know, I just threw all, every single one of your rules, I threw out the window. How's that going for you? Well, now um, now, it, now it sucks. Now now, now everything's... You how know, many kind of thousands of dollars? How many thousands of dollars has it cost you not to listen to my advice? Uh, quite a few. However, at least I have... At least I did the one thing that was right, and I made her... Sign this promissory note. It's the only thing I feel like. I, I mean, I did. But yeah, but you spent money, money on her, and but you spent other money on her that you're not going to get oh, back. Of course. Oh, of course, thousands upon thousands, meals and dinners and going places and just her, her, her living in my house when I wasn't there. I mean, you know, n- not not paying rent. Every single thing you tell every all your listeners and all your students not to do, right. I did it. And I and I was a listener for years and years and years. I believed in everything you told us. But you should have, because now look what happened. I, I hear you, and so I'm kind of calling in just to get some advice, and at the same time, I get you, some I, advice. I and you're right. I I told you what to do. Uh, you uh, put a lien on that car, and uh, you call it in, and that's that. All right, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to stop listening. And I advise everyone out there just to not stop listening. Because it's like any other, any other skill you have in your life. If you don't keep practicing this stuff, you're going to lose it. And if you lose it, you're going to lose it in life. No doubt about it, Jeff. Thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, I used to date a twin and uh, grab her boobs and tell her they felt just like her sisters. What'd you say to that? She used to get really pissed off and, uh, and, you know, try and slap me and stuff. But, yeah, I really did know what her sisters felt like, so it's all good. The Tom Likas Show. Go ahead. Tune in at work. San Diego's Dave and Jeff. Weekdays on 1037 Free FM. Because it is a living human being with feelings. So are we. What? So are we. No, you guys don't have feelings. If you had feelings... Oh, yes, we've got feelings. We've got feelings that we want to get laid, feelings that we need sex, feelings that we're horny. we got a lot of feelings. That guy that called you earlier because he was afraid to break up with his girlfriend, who he could not hurt her because he still felt compassion for her, and you called him... He was a a pussy. He's a complete pussy. No, he was not. He was being a real man. He was seeing that she had feelings. Complete pussy. 
complete, but yeah, yeah, a complete pussy who's demanding money from him all the time. That's Just the kind we talk right. about. What he should have done is sit down, talk to her, and if she refused to uh, acknowledge the fact that she was using him, then he should have left her. But oh, when you stop do, it. You talk to them. Yeah, person. yeah, no, no, no. You don't talk to a person who's a user like that. You kick her to the goddamn curb. Mike, what did you want to say to Ariel? Hey, Tom. Hey. I think everyone's kind of, well, not everyone, because they only had one caller on this broad, but I think she's missing the point completely. She is the girl that you describe to everybody, all of us, every day. I don't care what which one of your listeners, if she's in a club, I'm a decent-looking guy. I make good money. I'm single. I guarantee I meet this girl in a club. Oh, oh she wants to talk so tough. I pull her out of there so fast that night. And we'll be friggin' legs up, banging it out, either in her place or mine, guaranteed, just by what she said. It, it's unreal. Her insecurities that she has herself, and she wants to talk a big game, but then why is she listening to your program? <laughs> because I'm obnoxious. Count the 20. Guaranteed. And I don't even have that good of a game, but I guarantee you I'd have this brought in my bed. I've had worse and better than you, sweetheart, and you'd be right there with them. And that's because you're finding women that are shallow. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you're right there with them. You'd be in my bed tonight if I met you in a club tonight. No, Guaranteed. I wouldn't because I don't go to those skanky places. She can't because she's Whenever under. She's you, underage. Are, I'd have you in my bed. Wherever it was, Starbucks, library, club. I I'm have enough sorry, love, but I I'd like people with tonight. a two-digit IQ at least. Then why are you listening to Tom Likas right now? Like I said, it was obnoxious, and I happened across it when I was sitting in the car. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of funny. That's funny how all the women who call on the show said the same thing. But they're well, calling in and wondering what we're doing, and they're trying to figure out how. And, I, again, I guarantee it, me or any other guy listening to the show with even a half an ounce of game would have you in their bed if they knew what they were doing. Mike, Ariel, thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I was single again, I would live my life listening to you. But I'm married. See that? You're tied down, and you want to go out and bang around again. Oh, man, do I ever. It's Like is 101 on the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Like is 101. I am your professor, Olga. Hello. Hello? You busy over there? Um, actually, yeah, I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm at the beach, and it's fun. We're drinking beers, and it's really, we're having a great time. So why are you, why are you, uh -huh. call, why are you calling a radio show? Oh, I'm calling because I heard you. I, I We just tuned in, and you were saying something about, like, why be in a relationship? Yeah. And I kind of figured, you know, you've been married about three to four times. 17, 18 times, yes. How many times? 17 times. Oh, 17 times. Yes, yeah, 17 times I've been married. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then obviously you were kind of desperate to be in a relationship. Oh, I was, but not anymore. Oh, okay. Now I realize little sluts like you are easily gettable. Oh, okay. I get it. So I'm just wondering, I mean, you know, you're just saying that, and it's just like, it's, it's kind of sad. Nothing sad about it, dear. I get all the poon I want. Anytime I want a new piece of ass, I just reach out and touch someone. Oh, okay. But then you were just, it just I mean, I'm just kind of curious, because it just seemed like you were so desperate. And Again, dear, is, is this the only material you have? Because if you're going to keep repeating the same material over and over, no, I'm, I'm going to move on. Saying, I need to hear you know? say something new other than what you've already said. Right. Okay. Well, it's just, I'm just saying that because it's just, you know, like I said. Because you're just going to repeat it again, like I said. Uh, and when I hear the phrase, like I said, uh, you're pretty much on the way out. Like I said means you're going to repeat everything you just said. Literally, it means that. Like I said, don't repeat yourself. Like I said, don't repeat yourself. Because like I said, you find yourself in a conundrum. And when you find yourself in a conundrum, like I said, you start repeating yourself and you find yourself in a conundrum. Like I said, 
One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hello Tom. Hello Jeff. You know, first of all, let me tell you that uh, I've been a listener of yours for a real long time, up until about a year and a half ago when I got serious and I just kind of phased out of listening to you just because it was in my car. You didn't need it anymore because you found love. And, <laughs> oh, no, boy, did I find it. Um, right, let me tell you. How much, is it, how much is love costing you, Jeff? Say again, I'm sorry? How much is true love costing you? Uh, well, actually, that, that's my last question for you because... Uh, Everything is over now. I mean, I've gotten to the point where, I mean, it's the same old story. I'm an older guy, younger girl, met her, we hit it off. She was younger. She's a stripper, uh, part-time, but wanted to get out of it. Long story short, we end up, we end up living together. We're having a great time. We're in love. She's got, you know, she had an old psycho ex-boyfriend that she was getting away from, and I helped her out with that situation. She had some court problems and this and that. I helped her out with money for it. Long story short, and a year later or so, I get fed up with everything. I do the right thing and I kick her out, but I'm still, you know, the puss and I still want her back and oh, all this stuff. And now I'm pissed off about the fact that I lent her money, all these other things. However, when I did lend her the money, I made her sign a promise every note and I made her put up her car for it. Right. And, and just recently I said, I, I called it in and I said, I want my money. And if you don't give me money, I'm going to take the car. And now she's freaking out. Right. So take it. I should, right? Of course. I should have no remorse. You have to ask. No you I have to ask. Do you understand? There is no lending money to a to a stripper or a hooker. You don't lend them money, because because they they will never pay you back. Yeah, she was good. She paid me back for. I set up payments with her. She paid, like the first couple of months. I got money, and then it tapered off you know, because I was a sucker and I was in love. You know, you let those things go. And you let Why do you fall in love go. with a stripper? A, because I'm an idiot, Tom, and I wasn't listening. A stripper is, a, you want to talk about women being sperm depositories, a stripper is no more than that. Do you understand? Yeah, I totally understand, and I, t I totally know you're right. And, and before you stop listening, I used to tell you that on the air all the time. And for years, I've been. I was. I would never do that. I would never date. I would never even talk to anybody if they were under twenty-five years old. I wouldn't have anything to do with them. I was, you know, always on top of my game. I'm a successful person. What did I, I tell you about strippers? What did I tell you? I, I don't remember your exact words. Forgive me. Uh, there's no dating a stripper. There's strippers no are stripper. strippers are hookers who don't put out. Strippers are human ATMs. <laughs> I've said this for years. I know you have, and I and and, and, and you pay. I, you I, thought, and you it. thought you knew more than I did, didn't oh, you? Of course. At that, at that time, and uh, once we started having sex, and the sex was great and everything, yeah, sure. As we know, I just threw all, every single one of your rules I threw out the window. How's that going for you? Well, now, um, now, now it sucks. <laughs> now, now, now everything's. You How know, many kind of thousands of dollars? How many thousands of dollars has it cost you not to listen to my advice? Uh, quite a few. However, at least I have. At least I did the one thing that was right, and I made her. Sign this promissory note. It's the only thing I feel like I, I mean, I did. But yeah, but you spent money on her, and but you spent other money on her that you're not going to get oh, back. Of course. Oh, of course. Thousands upon thousands. Meals and dinners and going places and just her, her, her living in my house when I wasn't there. I mean, you know, n not, not paying rent. Every single thing you tell every, all your listeners and all your students not to do. Right. I did it. And I, and I was a listener for years and years and years. I believed in everything you told us. But you should have, because now look what happened. I, I hear you. And so I'm kind of calling in just to get some advice. And at the same time, I you get some I'm advice. And you're right. I, I told you what to do. Uh, you uh, put a lien on that car, and uh, you call it in, and that's that. All right. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to stop listening. And I advise everyone out there just to not stop listening. Because it's like any other, any other skill you have in your life. If you don't keep practicing this stuff, you're going to lose it. And if you lose it, you're going to lose it life. No doubt about it, Jeff. Thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, I used to date a twin. And uh, I'd grab her boobs and tell her they felt just like her sisters. What'd you say to that? She used to get really pissed off and, uh, and, you know, try and slap me and stuff. But, yeah, I really did know what her sisters felt like, so it's all good. The Tom Likas Show. From 
the studios of Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. The Tom Likas Show. Likas 101, I am your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alex, hello. Alex. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Good, good, man. I'm finally glad I got it. I was able to get through, man. Um, as I told D when I gave a call, um, it's been about a couple of weeks ago. I just wanted to give you, you know, get your opinion and uh, give you a little, you know, insight of what's going on with me. Basically, what I did is I I'd, uh, just seen this finest looking girl one day, and I just decided to go up to her. But uh, fortunately, my uh, my rejection came for her phone number, so she ended up taking mine down. I, you know, I was like, well, damn, you know what? She's not gonna call anyways. Oh well, forget about it. But uh, to my to my surprise, she ended up calling me, and uh, we've been talking for a little while ever since. So uh, I didn't really, you know, try to, you know, make myself, you know, look too much interested or whatever. But she seemed to be more interested than I was, so I jumped on it. So what had happened is uh, I just took her out to lunch. I didn't spend more than forty dollars, just to let you know. Uh, just took her to a nice little place and uh, ended up making a comment about uh, her and guy friends. So uh, why do you care if she has guy friends? I see here you're twenty years old. Who cares? Yeah, well that's what I'm saying. But even at the end of that, I got a. I got kiss. I got kiss. You know, she she's into me. She's always hitting me up and everything. And uh, I just want to see, like you said. I mean, there's some I should care about. Just go for it, get it done with, and just you know. Well, you shouldn't care because you shouldn't be worried about having a monogamous relationship. No, it's not even. It's not even that though. But see, the thing is though, is that when you smish with guy friends, it's just like, do I want? Is she using me like a guy friend or just playing? You know, take her out because I'm. I'm not. I'm no, not no, you're, to... you're, if you don't get anything the first three dates, you're done. Oh, is that it? Yes, and you shouldn't be spending more than forty dollars. You shouldn't be doing that. Oh no, no, I didn't spend more than forty dollars at all. No, no, no. You just said you did. No, no, no. I didn't. How much did that meal cost you? Uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight Tw total. Twenty-eight total. No drinks. Yeah, drinks, everything included, man. It was just a nice little lunch, and uh, that was all it was. By the way, no lunch. Shouldn't be having lunch. Really? You know what lunch says to a woman? What's that? Friend. Guy friend. She kiss, you think she kisses her guy friends too? <laughs> that what I'm trying to tell you is when you go out to a, a lunch with a woman, yeah. you're letting her know that you're no more than a friend. Hmm. A date has alcohol. Right. Okay. Or it has some other kind of chemical abuse. <laughs> Take advantage, huh? Well, it, 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 Lunch is not the equation, nor is coffee. Well, not even drink coffee, but I know what you're saying. No Starbucks. No. No coffee shop uh -huh. where she has coffee and you don't. No. Right. Well. You, the, you, do, you do not let the light of day hit their face. If you saw the sun hit their skin, you did the wrong thing. Really? So, but why, one of the questions I wanted to go back to was... Um, Usually, I mean, women doesn't take your number. She doesn't want to give you a number. She doesn't want to give you your number. Why did she end up calling me? That's that's fine that she called you. You shouldn't be available during the day. Right. I just, because whenever, I mean, I always receive, oh, well, give me a call, text messages. I don't call. You know what I mean? Right. I don't call. Matter of fact, she was trying to give me this little thing. Well, I'm kind of busy right now. She called me when she got out of work. And uh, I was like, okay, that, that's perfectly fine. And then uh, she said, I'll give you a call back once I get him back to my house. And uh, me, like a dumbass, ended up calling. You don't know. You, first of all, you never call them two times in a row. I didn't call them two times in a row. She, met, she called me when she got out of work, and uh, she was on her way home. She got home. She said she'd call me back, and uh, I was like, "Well, call back." So I, you know, called her. She said she was busy talking to her mom. So I said, "Okay, whatever." And she said, "You know what? I'm sorry. Give you a call. Give me a call tomorrow." She give me a call tomorrow. I'm like, I'm not gonna call. And that's... she called you. Well, great. Well, the point is. So what is your question? I'm, I'm... Well, my question is, is that, like, uh, going back to what I said, her guy friends, should I even care or just do what you said? Like, Why would you care? Go on, go on a three days, but get some... Why would... tell? Explain to me why you would care that she has guy friends. Because that's what I'm saying. If she means like she's interested, like in me, but she's really looking at me like a guy friend. I'm well, like, uh, uh, well you sir, so far, you have not made yourself into a sexual being with her. You had lunch with her. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You that's saw her during the day. That's only once, yeah. Uh, I don't think you should anything. never, but you should never do that. Never. Because you have headed down the wrong path now. 
you know, unless a woman is already dating you, right. sex happens at night, right. usually with a couple of drinks. Right. Lunch is saying, pal, this is my buddy, Alex. Mm -hmm. This is my friend. Right. You see? Right. Uh, you, I, don't, I don't know how long you've been a student here, but I've been telling this to students for a long time. Yeah. So, kind of messed up on that one, huh? Yes. What should be my next move, Tom? Well, what, are you supposed to call her again and set up another date? She had told me to give her a call, but I'm still kind of lingering on that one, man. I don't know if it's even going to be a... Uh... Matter of fact, the week before, I had invited her to a party where I know it was going to be drinks. It was a, a cousin of mine at a party, and uh, that, that same day, I'd give her a call uh, to make sure she was going to go or not. She didn't, she didn't give me a call about... No, matter of fact, she didn't call. She even texted me that oh. later on that night. She's saying uh, she had been in the hospital... Uh, over oh, a family member. I'm blah, not blah, over. blah. Look. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's I would I'm say saying. do what I always recommend. You need to have five plates spinning at any given time. Makes, makes it easier, huh? Well, the thing is, then you don't make stupid moves. Right. You understand, one of the reasons I never desperately lunge after women to make stupid moves is because I've always had a bullpen. So the starters now. The when starters you're lineup. sitting there with nothing to do, your mind starts working over. Sitting there with nothing to do, your mind starts working overtime. And maybe I should call her. Well, maybe I should wait a while. Well, maybe I should. Maybe if I wait a while and then call her, or maybe if I call her tomorrow. You know, if you were with somebody else, you wouldn't be thinking about you wouldn't that. Wouldn't be thinking about. It. That's right. That's right. So basically, just. Let us see what happens, and just meanwhile work on something else. Correct. Right? Always be working on something else. Working on something else. You know what they said in the movie, ABC, always be closing. Yep. I don't know if you always heard the saying, though, but uh, this, like I said, it's like, show me a girl who wants to be friends, and I'll show you the guy who's effing her. <laughs> yes, I know that saying. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Frank on Like Us 101. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, Frank. Man, I think you are the pimp of men. <laughs> Thank you. But you pimp women, obviously. But anyways, I just wanted to say to uh, to that one girl that called earlier, that Ariel girl. Yes. Um, Practically, to me, the reason why we treat girls the way they are is because what? That, seriously, girls are seriously whores now. The day it's not it's not like it used to be like in the fifties. It's completely different now. Girls are literally whores. If you look at at freaking the porn industry, you know how many girls. Well, are what does it tell you in? when 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 girls' idols are Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton? What does it tell? Exactly, you? man. I'm like uh, the way the way it works with women. When a fad comes out, what do they do? They follow it. And that that that's that's just simple. Look, just look at porn for example. You know, like the porn industry. Mm -hmm. Look how many girls are going into porn. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they have low self esteem, but hey. Who care? We don't really care about that, man, just as long as we get laid. And we shouldn't care about it. Veronica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. First, I'd like to thank you, Tom. Yeah? I became a listener myself. Uh, my ex-boyfriend of five years, he would constantly, you know, give me tips, and I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to listen up on this guy. Well, it was sad for him because it turned out where I started learning about this, and I started seeing some patterns, and then so I just called it off. Mind what? you, he's uh, he's was accepted to law school, so he tried to use that. He's not very attractive, I'll tell you that. He tried to use it as an advantage to get girls. And by listening to you, which I want to thank you, you saw me, you helped me see these patterns that he had, and I called it quits before. We were supposed to get married in June, actually. See, and you but shouldn't I, be getting married at all at 23. Yes, exactly. Well, see, I, I guess listening to you brought me back to reality. And it's really sad. These girls call in all uh, angry trying to stand up for things they don't even know half about but girls portray these slutty you know so to speak uh actions that they do and it's just reality it's the fact and you can't hide it well hang Ignoring on a second it. i'm glad you like the show veronica but i yes, want you I to do. i want you to listen to what the next caller is going to say and then i want you to respond to what she says here okay let me okay. Hey, this is michelle michelle what were you going to say michelle yes what were you going to say what was i going I want to tell Tom how pathetic he is. Pathetic? Pathetic. What do you think, Veronica? Uh, I, I wouldn't say pathetic. You just, it's reality. 
you can't hide from facts. I mean, if if it's there in front of your face, it's not things he's making up. These are things he's actually, he, I see myself. I have six older brothers. I've seen the worst that a man could do to a woman. And these women, they just let it happen. And they yet they still want to complain on why people see them as these these girls to turn to when they need a sexual pleasure. And I mean, that's what, what, that's what it's going to be because of what we do and how we do it. But yet we still want the respect. So I don't see how Tom would be considered pathetic. Michelle? Whenever a girl falls in, he either has to speak louder than her, not let her speak, or hang up on her because he can't accept that obviously he got played. Oh, my God. The Tom Likas Show.